your presentation. And then the the best thing that we have in our practice is the quantifiable stuff, you know, like the vitals, the labs, and then anything else in there, like maybe an intracranial pressure or something like that. And then vital signs. Vital signs are crucial. So those, <coughs> they look at things like x-rays. Do you guys look at x-rays? We don't. We don't, We, you know, it's interesting and fun to look at those things. Or, you know, results from the HIDA scan, the HIDA scan, you know, or all that stuff. Or even endoscopies. That's what the dogs look at. So, a di so what do you think a differential diagnosis is? So, say like you work in the ED, not as a nurse practitioner, just as a nurse. You're there. How do you come up? So, if you can't have a patient, how do you, you come up with a medical diagnosis? You can nurse. You can nurse. In your head. Because you do that. Oh. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's what you do. You, you actually come up with, and why do you have to come up with a medical diagnosis? Exactly. It's expediency. And so we, we start get just like a practitioner would do, we start gathering data. We start getting the data. And we say, okay, and again, it says, you know, we say our stuff looks like a duck, blocks like a duck. Example, oh my God, there's so many. Um, is that why the NGN questions are always trying to make you like figure out the yes. diagnosis? Yes. Yeah. They are. Not only the diagnosis, like the nursing diagnosis, medical, but nursing diagnosis, but also to figure out what to do and what's the logical, safest interventions, you know, based on your findings. So yeah, we do that all the time. And the reason, so let's do a shock patient. So they come in, you get a history, right? <clears throat> oh no, maybe they're shocked or they're bleeding out for whatever reason. So what are you worried about? Or burn. So what are you worried about? What's the number one thing? Huh? Hypovolemic shock, right? Did I say they're bleeding? So, so yeah, gut shock, maybe bleeding, hemorrhaging. Oh, they, they come into the ED and they go like this, and it's blood. So what are you thinking? So they're, they probably have an upper GI bleed. That's the first thing that you're gonna, think of, it's probably upper GI bleed. But then you go, why? You know, why? Where's that coming from? Then you start getting your history and physical, which you do on your S bar, what's our medical history. Nurse practitioners do the same thing. They go a little bit deeper, don't they? <laughs> Surgeries and stuff like that. But as a nurse, you do the same thing. So now, could it be different types of GI bleeds? Yeah. So, so what a differential diagnosis is, so what his case is, is the difference between cholelithiasis and cholecystitis. And then, so the finding was a great case study, and it had the ear markings of either cholecystitis or cholelithiasis. And he went ahead and put in there pancreatitis, but I didn't have enough evidence there was no, and but he did suggest, let's do a lipase, let's do an amylase, let's do an abdominal ultrasound. He was right on. However, there was another part of the thing, and then I compared my liver function with no pancreatic stuff. Oh, it wasn't pain. It was all on this side. I figured it out. I'm pretty sure I was right. It's all on this side. Nausea and vomiting after a meal, a big, large meal. And didn't say fatty, because cholecystitis, remember this word, AH1, right? But the pancreas stuff was missing. If it would have been pancreatitis, see, that's where you're differentiating, could be this or could be that. The example that I sent back, he, he says differential, I'm just having, and what I said, what, and I put an actual definition, is comparing two things. You have to come up with a legal diagnosis, right? but it's gonna be based on your evidence and also a little bit of experience based on your, your you know, previous patient care. So anyway, I, I told him I believe it's probably um, cholelithiasis. Now they could have cholecystitis with that, but the pancreatitis did not make sense because the pain was only on this side. See how you put it all together? I told him it's like putting together a piece of uh, a puzzle. You do the same thing. They're holding your chest. Now, what could that be? There's two things it could be. MI. 
actually, there's a lot more. But two of the things that you think about, first of all, heartburn, actual heartburn or an epilepsy, and then how is it going, how are you going to come to a conclusion, a legal conclusion, that it's an MI? Tripod, see how, so we're having so much fun. I will, I'll give you information as you go along with the case study, and, and he's almost ready to graduate. And it was a pharmacologic thing. So she had metabolic syndrome. Oh, it came down to one thing for me, to get gout. She has a history of gout. Can you form stones, kidney stones and cholelithiasis from gout? You're a gasset. And I'm going, that's the big differentiator for me. That I would say definitely there's stones present with probable cholecystitis. But it could come down to that one thing. Anyway, very, very exciting. Okay, so um, so you nurse practitioners, it, it's it's just so cool. What I'm going to do today? Are we going to do an exam review? Yes, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be laden with a lot of information that you've already had because we have finished the the reviews. Is there a big however? Yes. As I told the other class, my objective for you, when you take your CMS and your exit exam and your boards, what is the objective? Pass. You can pass. That's exactly right. How are you going to pass? My job, I feel, that I've always felt, is, and, and really, actually, it's not all on my shoulders, but I still feel compelled to give you what you need because there's so much. So what I'm doing, I'm tweaking your test. Every semester I tweak the test a little bit. We're going to go through each answer, each test question, and each answer. Now why am I doing that? Because this test, historically, your grade goes bam. And plus, because there's so many select on the other one. That's why. So, we are going to be very detailed and very specific today. So I would encourage highly that you take a really good note. And I'm tweaking a couple things and I'm adding to some of your select all that apply some very specific things. Now where do I, why do I do that? Is because I keep up on literature all the time, constantly. Making sure that I look at ATI, making sure that the things that I think you're going to be tested, I will test you. So I will add things. And I already have already started with a couple things. And as we go along, uh, I will tell you precisely what you need to know. What I told, let's see, what was the, the topic? <coughs> oh, it was for pancreatitis um, interventions. So what I have to do for both classes, I decided to take out fatty liver. I mean, honestly, when you have a fatty liver, can it cause you trouble? Yeah. It can cause you trouble. But what's more important, you learn how to take care of the pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis patient, versus knowing a little bit about fatty liver. So fatty liver is out. I decided that today. Because I said, oh my god, I don't have a question in here on the interventions for pancreatitis. So what I have to do is I have to compile uh, uh, an announcement for you, okay? So that's a part of my thing. I'll do it tomorrow, probably. I just barely was able to send you, did you notice? Just barely, and remember, I promised that to you last Thursday, that did not happen. Because my whole day was from the time I got here to the time this. It was go, go, go. Because we're certain that you memorize the things in nursing school, of course you do. Tons of stuff. But then you have to know the whys. Are we going to get into lots of whys today? Yeah. yeah. Just to, we've already done it, but we're going to solidify those and really gel those so you learn it deeper. Okay, we're going to start with you over there. Let me find.